Hi everyone, today we're going to go over what types of CARS resources to use and when to specifically use them, and also a little bit about how um, you can use them in your prep. So one of the biggest questions I get is, hey, where do I start? And I would really recommend um, either the AMC CARS Diagnostic Tool, which is probably the best one, but if you don't have access to the CARS Diagnostic Tool, you can also take a look at uh, the Khan Academy passages that they have for free um, on their website. So First, with the CARS Diagnostic Tool, it's a really great way to figure out where are my mistakes based on the AMC reasoning. The reason why you want to figure this out when you start is because if you want to focus on your weaknesses from the very beginning of your prep, which is kind of like the ideal approach, um, testing yourself with the AMC reasoning and seeing what's going on there can help you figure out like what types of questions you're missing. So, you know, we have CMP, reasoning within the text, reasoning beyond the text, and I'll probably make another video about how to kind of look at these questions and whatnot. Um, but also it allows you to figure out like, hey, is my problem timing and pacing? Or is my main issue like getting stuck on 50-50 and um, am I having a hard time capturing the main idea? So these are all different like things you can diagnose with the diagnostic tool. Um, as a side note, in terms of difficulty and I guess priority of what to do when you're closer to your exam is QPAC, Sorry, not QPAC 2. QPAC 1 is harder than QPAC 2, uh, which is harder than, I'll just say, DT for the diagnostic tool. So basically, when you're starting off, this is probably the best way to go uh, because it'll give you a really good snapshot of the AMC reasoning and also their style of passages. So the pros with this is figuring out what are your main issues based on the AMC reasoning. The cons with this tool is that the passages can sometimes be longer than the actual full length exam, so it can kind of feel like a lot when you're starting. And also there's more questions per passage. Sometimes it can go beyond six, it can be like seven or 10 questions per passage. So just keep in mind that your full length exams are probably not gonna have something that long um, or something with that many questions, but I think the purpose of them putting that there is so that you really get a good test and feel for what's going on. Um, and again, highly recommend the CARS diagnostic tool but I know that finances is also really important for students. Shelling out that money at the very beginning of prep can be a lot. Um, and so the second best resource to start off with is Khan Academy because they made these passages with the AMC. And so if you decide to do Khan Academy first way through, doing it untimed is perfect um, because you can just get a feel for your reasoning and what's going on there. Um, and then you can always do it time later on, but we'll go into that. The pros of Khan Academy, is that it's free. And the reasoning that they have in terms of third party resources is a little bit closer to the AMC since they made them in partnership with that. The cons is that the passages are shorter and there's also less questions per passage. So it tends to average around, I would say like four to five, I believe. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're practicing, but it can be a great little sampler to get started. So let's say, you know, you've kind of started off with the AMC cards diagnostic um, you've figured out what your mistakes are, and maybe you've watched some of my other videos about strategies you want to use and try out. And so trying out strategies with the CARS diagnostic tool is perfectly fine. It's pretty extensive and there's a lot of questions. Once you finish that, you want some third-party resources so that you can start refining those skills and get a foundation for how to read a passage, how to connect the main idea, how to approach questions before you jump back into AMC content. So again, Khan Academy, great resource, free. I guess the other con is that there's not as many passages, but you can do them twice. And so personally what I did and what's also worked for a few of the other students that I've worked with is doing them untimed the first time around. I'm trying to hit around 75 to 80% accuracy on these passages. Um, then you wait about two to three weeks um, and then you end up doing them timed. And so doing it under time conditions a second time around will help you figure out if the same issues you're having with reasoning keep coming up um, or if something has improved or maybe timing is the main issue that you're having and you can kind of figure that out as well while doing something that's closer to the AMC. Some other good third-party options are, of course, Jack Weston. Shout out to them for putting up just a ton of free passages. And so the pros is that it's free. Um, the cons is that they tend to kind of like have different reasoning for their questions. Sometimes the reasoning is a little bit off. 
Um, doesn't match up exactly with the AMC, but just like with any third party resource, it's not going to match up 100% to what you're going to see on a full length or even the Q packs or the question bags. Um, another thing you can try out is exam crackers. I know that there's probably a PDF swirling around Reddit somewhere. Um, the pros of these is that it's a good volume uh, of passages, like there's a good number in that PDF. Um, they're also more interesting. So that's a pro and a con within itself because it's a pro, you'll be more engaged when you're starting off. The con is that some of the AMC passages are genuinely kind of boring. And so it's good to get used to that um, and find ways to combat that. Uh, I guess the other con would be that when I've gone over these passages with students, sometimes they're not fully representative of how they structure the AMC questioning. And sometimes the reasoning asks you to rely on some outside knowledge sometimes. So just be mindful of that. And if you're really looking for a challenge, the Princeton Review Hyperlearning book, um, again, probably a PDF somewhere out there, but you can also purchase them. Um, not advocating copyright infringement at all for any of these, um, but it's a great resource to use. However, it's extremely challenging. Like. I felt like my butt was getting kicked when I was doing these and students have kind of um, corroborated the same kind of sentiments about that. So just keep in mind that these are something you maybe don't want to do as frequently in your prep, especially if you're feeling a bit discouraged about CARS prep, um, but doing it every now and then can help you test your reasoning. And if you like that kind of challenge, you can continue to do it. Um, and so this may be an unpopular opinion, but I think that your world is probably on the lower end, I guess, of that tier list for CARS resources, and I'll tell you why. So the pros with your world is that you get a bunch of passages, um, and then you also get explanations with them, and on top of that, you have a timing feature. So the timing feature for your world is great, because if you're someone who is like, oh, I'm going to give myself 11, but then you end up adding on extra time, if you want to stay accountable, your world will just stop the entire test once that timing mark is hit. So it's a really good tool to use for that. The cons is that I've noticed with a lot of students, and I would say even, I would guess around like 10 to 15 students I've worked with in the past like two or three months that one of the drawbacks of your world is that they have a very kind of template-like way that they write their questions and their, their passages. So people have a bigger adjustment going from your world to something like the diagnostic tool or the QPAX versus doing something like Khan Academy or Jack Weston and then jumping to AMC. So the reasoning is something that I kind of have a break with. Um, I think I see students have a greater adjustment period with your world. So in terms of cars, it's not the best resource. But again, if you're someone who is struggling to stay accountable with timing yourself, then your world is a great option. So how exactly should you use these third party? Some people like to go through all of Khan Academy or all of Jack Weston, or all of exam crackers before moving on to the next resource. Honestly, what you can do for third party to make sure you're not staying and get stuck on any one line of reasoning is to kind of mix them up. So spend maybe one or two days on Khan Academy, one or two on Jack Weston, um, kind of add in and mix and match what you're doing so that you always have some kind of variation when it comes to the source, uh, the difficulty level, and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I would recommend a month and a half before your test to start working through the Q packs and again, doing those untimed in time. Now, keep in mind, if you have a really sharp memory, you don't have to do any of this timed. So if you're able to remember first, kind of like what the answer is, so what the answer is, as well as like your reasoning. So how you got the answer. Um, if you remember these two things, then you should not repeat the passages. Um, but if you're like me and you kind of have a memory of a goldfish and you're not going to remember it after two to three weeks like this stuff, then it's perfectly fine to redo them timed. Um, and so giving yourself a month and a half is just to account for all the other things that you have to do for the AMC, like the full lengths, the section banks, the other subjects. So just be sure to spread it out in terms of the Q packs and really making sure that you spend a lot of time on these going through them because the reasoning is very key for that. So this is a basic overview of the types of resources you can use. Um, this is a similar approach to what I took. I mostly focused on the CARS Diagnostic, Khan Academy, Jack Weston, and a little bit of TPR sprinkled here and there. And then I focused on Q pack one and two. But I wanted to offer a lot of different options for people because I know 
the resources every student has access to can vary. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if it was, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and also, if you're feeling generous, donate and support. Um, but if you don't have the financial means to do so, probably the best ways you can support this channel is honestly to share this video with someone else you know who is going through MCAT prep and needs some help with cars. I'm really trying to reach out as many people as possible. So very thankful that you took your time today to watch this video. Feel free to share any feedback um, or ideas, and I will see you in the next video.